Now, look, Mrs. North, we want my sister's baby, and we want it right away, or you're going to get hurt. Griff. Oh, listen. There's someone at the door. It's my husband. Now we'll see. We'll see what? (gasps) Griff, put that gun away. Ham! Jerry! Darling, look out! Mr. and Mrs. North, starring Alice Frost and Joseph Curtin. Listen as Pam and Jerry solve the mystery, The Last Escape. A taxi turns into a narrow Manhattan street, moves slowly to the front of a red brick tenement, and stops. This morning, it's two passengers, a mild, colorless young man in his 20s, and a tall, stately, determined woman of 60, were 3,000 miles away in California. But that's not important. For women like Victoria Jameson, no distance is too far and no obstacle too great to keep them from getting what they want. Here you are, 84 Willard Street. You want I should wait for you? Yes. And you too, Paul. Please, Mother, I want to see Susan. This isn't a social visit, Paul. But good Lord, Mother, Susan's my wife. Was your wife, Paul? Was. Now, I won't be long. I'm merely going to tell Susan we've come for the baby. You've and... come for the baby. You're the one who's taking Dickie away from Susan. Now, make that clear to her. If I thought you really wanted me to, I would. But I don't. Mother, listen. This will take only a few moments. Oh, killer. Someday I'll... Did you say something, mister? What? Oh, no, no, I... I didn't say anything. So, so can't you shut that kid up? So, hey, so will you? Hey, what's going on? Can't you hear the kid squalling? So you brat. Ruth, come here. What? Look out the window. You see the woman getting out of the taxi? What about her? That's Mrs. Jameson, Paul's mother. Paul's. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I thought you said the little jerk didn't have a family. I, uh, I, I did say that, Griff. Why? I, never mind that now. We will mind it now. Why'd you lie? Please, Griff. Mrs. Jameson's come to get Dickie. What? Hey, look, will you tell me what's going on? All of a sudden, you got an ex-mother-in-law I didn't know you had, and you tell me she's come to get your kid. Let's have it. What gives? Don't be mad, Griff. I couldn't tell you about Mrs. Jameson because, well, she's got a lot of money and... You were having a tough time setting up your garage, and I thought... You thought I'd ask you to ask Mom-in-law for a loan. You would have, too, Griff. So would that have been a crime? I'm your brother, ain't I? Griff, please, that's not important now. She's going to take Dickie. How can she? The court gave the kid to you. Yes, but I wasn't supposed to take him out of California until after Paul and I got our final decree. Oh, fine, fine. What was I going to do? I had to come back here. I didn't have any place else I had to. Oh, there she is. Griff, help me. What can I do? You answer the door, Griff. Tell her the baby and I aren't here. Tell her anything. Look, so you... Please, Griff, please. Okay, okay. I'll try to stall her, but I'm not guaranteeing anything. Close the door. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I'm coming. Well? Good evening. I'm Victoria Jameson. I'd like to see Susan Wyatt, please. Sue ain't here. I'm her brother. Anything I can do for you? Are you quite sure your sister isn't in? I said so, didn't I? Under the circumstances, Mr. Wyatt, I'm afraid I can't take your word for uh, it. Just a minute, lady. You can't come barging in here. Would and... you prefer that I leave and return with the police? Police? I have a court order granting me custody of my grandchild. It's enforceable by law. I'll show you the order if you wish. I can't read. Will you tell your sister I'm here? I said she ain't in. Is this the door to the bedroom? Stay away from there. Let go of me. Get out of here. If you don't let go of me, Mr. Wyatt, you're going to be sorry. Very sorry. Now... Sue! Sue, take the kid and beat it. Out the back way. Beat it. Where did you park the car, Jerry? Oh, just around the corner. Did you enjoy the party? I thought it was horrible. Yeah, it was pretty bad, wasn't it? The same faces, the same silly conversation, the same awful jokes. Mm -hmm. We know what they're going to be like, but we keep going. Why? I don't know. Well, here's the car, dear. 
Now what'd I do with the keys? Sir, listen. What? That baby crying. I wonder where it is. It sounds awfully close by. Uh, from that apartment house, probably. Oh, where the devil are the keys? Jerry. What? That's why we keep going to these terrible parties. Huh? Because we don't have any reason. Uh, I mean, any really good reason to stay home. I take it you mean a baby. Yes. <laughs> well, what's so funny about that? You know, it's about time we seriously considered having a family. Pam, dear, a street corner in mid-Manhattan at 11.30 at night isn't the time and place to seriously consider having a family. Well... Oh, here are the keys. Now, let's... Hey, that's funny. The car's unlocked. You're always forgetting to lock it. Honestly, darling, take tonight, for example. If we had a baby, we wouldn't mm-hmm. have had to go to the... What the... Jerry... Darling, that crying isn't coming from the apartment house. It certainly isn't. What did you mean, dear, if we had a baby? We've got one. Oh, my golly. Oh, look at him, darling. Isn't he adorable? Yes, dear. He's wonderful, marvelous, stupendous. But who is he? What was he doing in our car? Who does he belong to? And why did we bring him home with us? Well, what should we have done? Told him to run along and find some other car to cry in? Mm -hmm. Very funny. Oh, the poor thing. Imagine anyone abandoning a sweet little... Pam, we should have taken him to the nearest police station. We should have... Oh, I'll get it. Hello. Mr. North? Yes? Uh, yes, yes, he's here. Oh, Mr. North, I know you think this is very strange, but if you'll keep Dickie for me just tonight and not let anyone know you have him, I'll come for him and tell you everything. What's she saying, Jerry? Uh, listen, Mrs., um, whoever you are, I want an explanation of this right now or I'm going to turn the baby over to the proper authorities. Oh, no. Yes. Well, I can't explain on the telephone. Well, you know my phone number, so you must know my address. I can't. No. Well, then... Then can you come here? I'm calling from the Wyatt Garage on Markham Square. What's happening, Jerry? She wants me to meet her at a garage on Markham Square. Tell her we'll be there. Uh, Mr. North! The baby stays here, so you do too. I'm not going to let you go alone. Darling, call Bill Wyatt and ask him to meet you there. Okay, okay. Mr. North! All right, I'll be there. Uh, What's your name? Susan Wyatt. This is my brother's garage. All right, stay there. I'll be over within half an hour. The story had better be good. Understand? Oh, yes, Mr. North. And thank you. Oh, Dickie. Dickie, my baby. I'll never let you go. Who's there? Who is it? Griff? Griff, is that... Paul. Don't be afraid of me, Susan. How did you get here? I saw you leave your brothers. You knew someone was following you, didn't you? You acted like it. Then you saw what I did with Dickie? Yes. Susan. Uh, don't touch me. Please, please, Susan. I want you to have Dickie. Don't you see? That's why I didn't take him out of the car. I don't want the baby. Then why didn't you stay in California? Because mother... Oh, yes. Because mother. So what's the difference? What your mother wants, you will. No. Since when? Susan. No, let go of me. I love you, Susan. I want you. Oh, let me go. I need you. Come back to me, Susan. Please, I love you. Let go. Now, get out of here. You hate me, don't you? No, Paul, I don't hate you. I did, but not anymore. You're not worth hating. I just feel sorry for you. Susan, listen. If you came back to me, you could keep Dickie. Mother couldn't take him away from you. Just like she couldn't take you away from me. It'll be different now. It'll never be different. Yes, I won't go back to California with her. I'll stay here. I'll get a job. Oh, stop it, Paul. Stop it. Stop trying to fool yourself. Ever since you were born, your mother's lived for just one thing. To make you hers. Well, now she's got you. And she'll never let you go. 
left. You see, when you left me and went back to her, you gave up your last chance of escape. You belong to your mother, and you always will. And even when she dies, she'll want to take you to her grave with her. And now she wants to do to Dickie what she's done to you. But I won't let her. I'll kill her first. Now, get out, Paul. Susan, Get I... out. You heard it, didn't you, Jameson? Griff. Come on, Buster. Beat it. No, I'm... Now, I'm... look, you... Take your hands off me. Now, you let go of me. Look out, Chris. Why, you take a swing at me like that. Like... Griff. Griff, he's hurt. Guy asked for it like that, I give it to him. Oh, but Griff... Leave him alone, he's okay. He had a long trip from California. He can use the rest. Well, where's the kid? With, uh, some people. What people? Well, their name's North. I left Dickie in their car. Why? I had to. I knew someone was following me, and I-, I thought I could lose them long enough to hide Dickie, so if they caught up with me, they wouldn't get him. Where do these people live? On St. Anne Place. There was identification in the glove compartment of the car. I call Mr. North. He's coming here. Here? With a kid? Oh, I don't think so, no. But with a lot of questions, you can count on that. You sure pulled a rock on the... Uh Uh-oh. That must be Mr. North. Turn off the light. Turn it off. Let's have a look. Two guys out there. Griff, Quiet. Griff, shouldn't we? Quiet, will you? Yeah, door's locked, though. Yeah, it looks like a wild goose chase to me. Come on, Sue. Out the side door. Where are we going? To get the kid, and no questions asked. Mrs. North? Yes? Uh, Mrs. North, Let me I... handle this. We've come for the baby, Mrs. North. The baby? Close the door, Sue. Who are you? This is the kid's mother. His mother? But she was supposed to meet my husband There's at There's been a, a change of plans. Uh, where's the kid? He's asleep in the bedroom. But Get you... him, Sue. No, you're not going to take him. I won't let you. <laughs> Go on, Sue. Now, just a minute. I don't know what you two think you're doing, but you're not taking that baby out of this apartment. I'm calling the police. Stay away from that phone. Now get the kid and let's get out of here. Oh, Griff, listen. There's someone at the door. It's my husband. Now we'll see. We'll see what? Oh, Griff, put that gun away. Shut up, both of you. Uh, come on in, Bill. I'm Jerry, the... look out! Watch it, you two. Watch it. You won't get hurt. Hey, what is this? They're after the baby. Now look here. No, no, you... wait a minute. Take it easy, Jerry. He's dealing. And don't forget it. So get the kid. No. What's the matter with you? I just realized what you were up to, Griff. You're not trying to help Dickie and me. You wouldn't put yourself on a spot like this for us. What are you talking about? You want to get your hands on Dickie so you can get money out of Victoria Jameson. You're nuts. Get the kid. No, Griff. And you'll have to kill me before you put a hand on him. Okay, Sue. There's more than one way to play this. Ah, uh, look, mister, put that gun away before someone gets hurt. Just hope that someone isn't you, brother. Now, if you take my advice, you'll all count to a million by ones before you stick your heads out this door after I leave. Griff! Come on, Bill. Hold it, Jerry. But he's getting away. All right, so you feel foolish. That's better than the way you'd feel if you went out that door and he starts shooting at you. And besides, I like to know why I'm running before I start chasing a guy. Suppose you tell me, Miss Wyatt... Oh, come on, come on. You did yourself proud a minute ago. I, I don't know where to start. Well, try the beginning and see what happens. Uh, that was in California two years ago. I, I married a man named Paul Jameson. Go on. Well, for a little while, everything was all right. Paul and I had a little place of our own, and, and Paul had a job. Even though his mother has a lot of money. I knew Mrs. Jameson didn't like me right from the first, but I didn't know why until one day... Just when I went out the side door of the garage and came here and... Well, you know the rest. You say your brother's address is 84 Willard Street? Yes. And you know where the Jamesons are staying? At the Sheffield Plaza, probably. Okay. Where are you going, Bill? First, I'm going to find Griff Wyatt. Uh, you want to come, Jerry? I certainly do. I'll get my coat. Your coat? Uh, wait a minute. Where are you going, Pam? With you and Jerry. Oh, no, no, no. You're staying here with Miss Wyatt. With oh. Miss Wyatt and the baby, dear. As 
I don't understand your behavior, Paul. I don't understand it at all. Letting that woman get away with the baby, actually seeing her leave it in some automobile oh, and Oh, for not... heaven's sake, Mother, haven't you said enough? Paul! Can't you ever leave me alone? I left you alone once, Paul, and you married Susan Wyatt. And what happened? You didn't rest until you'd broken us up. I? Yes, but you won't do it again. Now listen, Mother, I'm not going back to California with you. I'm going to stay here and prove to Susan and myself that I'm finally a man and not still your little boy. Then maybe Susan will take me back. Take you back? <gasps> oh, Paul, I'm sorry. Please, Mother, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't mean what I said. I know, darling. I know you didn't. It's that horrible girl who keeps coming between us. Mother, I... But everything will be all right when we get back home, won't it? Won't it, darling? Yes, Mother. <laughs> everything will be all right. I think I'll go to bed now. Yes, darling. It's awfully late. Good night, Paul. Good night, Mother. Oh, Paul. Paul, your poor mother will never... Yes, who is it? Rip quiet, Mrs. Jamison. What are you doing here? We'll get to that in a minute. You want Susan's kid, okay? I know where it is. Where? Uh, how much is the information worth to you? So that's what brings about this change of heart. Well, Mrs. Jameson? I'll tell you how much your information is worth, Mr. Wyatt. Exactly nothing. Nothing except a phone call to the police to have you arrested for kidnapping. <laughs> kidnapping? Yes, Mr. Wyatt. Your sister's child legally belongs to my son and me. When your sister took him out of your apartment and you helped her, you were both guilty Come of... off it, Mrs. Jameson. Let's be practical, huh? Very well, Mr. Wyatt. Hey, what are you doing? If you think you can bluff me... I but... never bluff, Mr. Wyatt, and I won't pay a ransom for my grandchild. I'm calling the police. Put down that phone. Put it down. Let go of me, you let... We've just been wasting time, Bill. We're no closer to finding Wyatt than we were an hour ago. Well, let's go up and have a talk with this Mrs. Jameson. Maybe she can trust us. What's the matter, Bill? Look, that crowd around the alley. Yeah. wonder what's going on. Let's have a look. Okay, folks, stand back, will you? Stand it back! Looks like an accident. Of yeah, uh, let us through here, will you please? Let us through. Wait a minute, you two. Stay back there with the rest of Lieutenant them. Wigan, homicide. Oh, sorry, Lieutenant. Hey, Bill, look, the old lady. Uh, what happened? Came out of her hotel window, 10th floor. Her name's Jameson. What? Jameson? Come on, Jerry. That's her son over there, but... Bill. Yeah? We'll be right on the edge of the crowd. Look. Griff Wyatt. He's getting away. Hey, hey, stop that man. That man there. Grab him. Stop him. Go on, Wyatt. Go on. Mrs. Jameson grabbed the phone. And I twisted it out of her hand and beat it. That's all. And you're not forgetting anything like the fact that you might have pushed her out of this window? Well, how do you know she was pushed? She, she could have jumped or fell. And closed the window after her? Maybe. But I don't think so, do you? She was pushed, Wyatt. Murdered. He's the one who killed her, the Take dirty... Take it no... easy, Jameson. Now, look, Wyatt, if you left this room and you say you did, why were you still hanging around the hotel? Well? I... I, I was waiting for Sue. Sue? Your sister? We left her at my apartment. I don't care where you left her. She was in the hotel 15 minutes ago. I saw her get on an elevator down in the lobby, so I decided to wait down there and see what she was up to. Next thing I knew, there's this commotion in the alley. I'm going to call Pam, Bill. Okay, Jerry. Oh, wait a minute, Wyatt. I want to get this thing. Pam. Jerry. Oh, darling, I've been hoping you'd call. Look, dear, is Miss Wyatt still there? No. That's what I want to tell you, Jerry. She's gone. She said she had a headache, and I went to get her and asked her. The baby was still here, but Miss Wyatt was gone. Darling, has something happened? Yes, dear. There's a possibility that Susan Wyatt killed Mrs. Jameson. What? But, Jerry, how... Oh, uh, darling, someone's at the door, but would you hold on a minute? 
Yes, what is... Miss Wyatt. I've come back for my baby, Mrs. North. And this time I'm going to take you. Miss Wyatt, but put away that gun. Get out of my way, Mrs. North. No. Jerry. Put down that phone. Oh, Jerry. Pam, what is it? What's the matter? Jerry, Miss Wyatt. No! <laughs> Hey, the door to your apartment's open, Jerry. Pam! Pam! Jerry! Pam! Oh, oh darling. Are you all right? Yes. I'm, I'm just a little scared, that's all. Well, what happened, Pam? Susan Wyatt shot at me and, and missed. I dropped down behind the couch. Fortunately, she didn't pay any more attention to me. She went into the bedroom to get the baby. Well, I'll call headquarters right away and get out a bulletin on her. Oh, you don't have to do that, Bill. Huh? She's still in the bedroom. What? When she went to get the baby, I crept over to the bedroom door, pulled it shut and locked her in. Now, I'll get her. Pam, you shouldn't have taken a chance like that. Well, I couldn't go on just lying there behind the couch. Okay, Miss White, come on out. Got a date down at headquarters. Uh, uh, Jerry, will you get my coat? Your coat? <laughs> Pam, dear, listen. Oh, I forgot. The baby. I've got to stay here. Miss Wyatt, you admit you went to Mrs. Jameson's hotel. Yes, yes. But you didn't go there intending to kill her? No. All you intended to do was plead with her to let you keep your baby? How many times does she have to answer these questions? Why don't you lay off her for a while? Now, look, Wyatt, if you want to stay here while I'm questioning your sister, be quiet. And remember, I'm not through with you yet. That goes for you, too, Jameson. Believe me, Lieutenant. I didn't kill Victoria Jameson. You just knocked on the door of a suite, and when she didn't answer, you went away? You didn't see Mrs. Jameson? No. And she's telling you the truth. How do you know, Jameson? Because I saw. And she didn't get up to the 10th floor until after my mother was dead. Is that the truth? Yes. You're sure, Jameson? Very sure? Yes. Then tell me, Jameson, why'd you do it? Why'd you do what, Bill? Push his mother out that window. I didn't. And then when you saw Susan Wyatt up on the 10th floor of the hotel, how did you know your mother was already lying down in that alley? I don't know. I don't know. Well, I'll tell you how you knew. And there was only one way you could have known, Jameson. You killed her. Yes, Lieutenant, you're right. I did kill her. Oh, Paul. Why, Jameson? Why? Just look at me. Ask Susan why she said she didn't hate me, that she just felt sorry for me. That's why. Because Mother would never let me leave her, and I didn't have the strength to break away and stay away. Because she spent most of her life ruining me, and she wanted to spend the rest of it ruining my son. That's why I killed her. I think I always knew I would. Someday. And when Bill caught him in a lie, Jameson broke down and confessed. Hmm. But what about Susan Wyatt, Jerry? What'll happen to her? Oh, she'll probably be released. Uh. Unless, of course, you bring some sort of charge against her. Oh. Oh, don't be silly. She's learned her lesson. And her place is with her baby. Uh, uh, by the way, dear, speaking of babies, I've been thinking about what you said about there being a really good reason for staying home. Mm. You were right. Take tonight, for example. If you hadn't had to take care of the baby, you'd have gone with me when I went to the Wyatt garage, when Bill and I went looking for Wyatt, and when we went down to headquarters. Mm, so? So, instead, you were here with the baby, staying out of trouble, perfectly safe. Uh, darling. What? Uh, you know, don't you, that we need a new shade for the lamp by the telephone? Uh, no, why? To replace the one that Susan Wyatt ruined when she took a shot at me, while I was staying home with the baby, keeping out of trouble. Uh, perfectly safe. <laughs> Next week, more adventure of Mr. and Mrs. North, starring Alice Frost and Joseph Curtin. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio Service.